Hello and welcome to History Repeats Itself. My name is Negative Root and today we'll be covering the launch of Sputnik 2. The date is the 3rd of November 1957. No, 1952. It's basically a month after Sputnik 1 first orbited the Earth, first man-made satellite in orbit. And the Russians are back at it again. They are going to be... Oh, whoops. They are going to be attempting to put the first living object into space. And that, my friends, is going to be... Poor little Laika. Now you might be able to see her. There she is. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, Laika was the first living thing in space. It was a uh, street dog from Moscow, apparently. So we'll be uh, covering the launch and seeing if we can recreate what exactly happened. We're on top of an R7 rocket again, the rocket that first carried Sputnik into space. Now yeah, then. Oh wow. There's our rocket. Let's, uh, let's get it going. Because we've got a bit of a goal to reach. Yeah. Just tilt her over a little bit. Now I did a test launch before and I couldn't quite get it to work how I wanted it to, so hopefully this one goes a bit better. Now Sputnik 2 really signaled to the Americans that they were a long way behind in the space race. They... The R7 was far superior to anything the Americans had. This rocket, um, and I'll show you what shortly is, you know, was far more superior and able to do, you know, a lot better than anything, uh, any missiles, ICBMs that the Americans had. The amount of Delta V that this rocket, ha rocket has, you know, for the time was just ridiculous. And that's how they were able to just turn around after, you know, completing the Sputnik 1 mission, turn around and put Sputnik 2 in in exactly um, into orbit with the exact same amount of success. Now, a little bit higher here. Now, the Sputnik 2 would have performed a normal um, normal gravity turn. Let's see if I can get a bit of inclination going on here. That's 45. Oh, whoops, we just ditched the nose cone. Now that didn't happen either in real life, <laughs> but this is the Kerbal Space Program after all. Now, what we're aiming for is an orbit 211 by 1659. We'll just boost up to that. Eleven. There it is. Now, when we get there, you know, obviously I've cut the engines here to get the right orbit, but uh, in real life, this would have just kept burning until um, exhaustion. As I said last video, I can't uh, quite get them to work. So, sixteen fifty-nine is what we're looking for. Sixteen. Sixteen. Fifty. Nine. Nine. Done. Go. Go. Get this thing to turn a little bit. Get on the node and then we'll time warp to... Uh, time warp to the manoeuvre. Get uh, Sputnik 2 deployed. Now, Sputnik 2, um, whilst it was certainly in the face of the Americans, was also one of the first stepping stones to prove that living beings could survive in space. Now, Laika, uh, Laika died. Uh, there's, the Russians were quite callous in their space program. They were 
more secretive than the Americans. And that allowed them to be a little bit more cavalier with um, the lives of, well, firstly animals and then later with their astronauts. Because uh, the Americans didn't know what was happening. Whereas the Americans, they broadcast everything. The, the Mercury 7, so the first astronauts, were actually introduced to the media. They were pretty much thrown to the walls and were introduced and they was, you know, they had the, uh, they had to answer questions from the media and, and basically the world knew what was going on at every second of the of the Americans' uh, space program. Whereas the Russians were very secretive; they didn't, uh, they didn't, they played with their cards very close to their chest, so nobody knew what was going on. I love this rocket. This is a very well designed rocket by the uh, Soviet rocket probes uh, mod. You notice that it's got the engines that gimbal and move and, and now we're just aiming for a nice orbit I want to get this below you know one meter per second and that will probably be close enough so there it is there's our orbit now this probe it uh, it didn't separate from the main stage it stayed connected and like her where is she there she is We see her. There she is. She made it through. Uh, it was three or four orbits, they reckon. It, like nobody actually knows when she she died. Some say that she lasted for a couple of months uh, up there, but uh, the Russians never intended to get her back. You know, they they wanted to put her in space, see what happened, see if she lived for a bit. She lived for a little bit, and then uh, died, unfortunately. But it did prove that something from Earth could survive given, you know, the appropriate climate. In the in the capsule, it hit 40 degrees um, during launch, I believe, and then from there it just climbed. So one thing that they had, they realized was that they'd have to deal with heat in the coming, uh, coming missions, but Sputnik 2 was an outrageous success, a coup for the Russians, and it really signaled that they, uh, they were a long way out in front uh, of the Americans. So there we go. We'll uh, disable SIS and Sputnik 2 has now joined Sputnik 1 in our solar system where history is being recreated in KSP. Thank you very much for joining me. I've been Negative Root. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode when it's the Americans' turn to fight back.